to undertake an active screening campaign for sleeping sickness. You have a population that is really neglected. People who suffer from the disease aren't receiving the care and the attention from the international community. Typically, it's happening in really remote areas who can't sustain health services for sleeping sickness. These are people like you and me who are trying to make a living, who are trying to look after their families, and are just unfortunate enough to live in an area for sleeping sickness. You can't just expect that people are going to come from these distant areas to health centres to come and be treated. The distance between the house for patients and hospital, it will take two or three days to reach the hospital. You need to go with your team, with your medical equipment, you know, chuck it all in a, in a truck, throw it all in a boat. You can't just go on a main road and get to an area and that's where sleeping sickness is. It's difficult to take all equipment to primary health care because it's needed a very well trained team and a very good equipment and supply system. And there's all sorts of difficulties keeping things refrigerated in a cold chain when you're working in a 40 degree equatorial sun. You've got to take microscopes, you've got to take centrifuges, all this equipment that needs power. Can you ask if these families have been screened as well? Yeah. For sleeping sickness, you've got to take all the kit, the reagents to test the blood, they all cost a lot of money. It's just not easy. To be able to tell you you've got sleeping sickness takes time. You do your first test. You do the next test. You have to take blood. You have to do lots of tests on the blood. The laboratory technicians are there working over a microscope for a long time. And then after that, you have to do the uh, invasive, uh, painful lumbar puncture, a needle in the spine to actually determine how advanced the disease is. It's too invasive, it's too long, and it's too resource heavy. This boy is very lucky. Now we are seeing uh, many cells in the CSF, so that means it's a positive case in second stage. So now he will receive the treatment for 10 days and will be fine. If we get that rapid diagnostic test for sleeping sickness, like for malaria, it will be very easy in a remote area to diagnose and to treat patients. It means we could go and we could do a population of 5,000 in a day, where at the moment, even with a big screening team, we can only manage 1,000 people. Not only is diagnosis for sleeping sickness difficult, it means you have to take a doctor and nurses and you have to create a temporary hospital or join a hospital and you have to administer these injections over a period of 10 days. At the moment, we're having to stick around in a place, bring more expertise, more materials, have more risk of complications because you're giving people injections. What we really need 
is to have an oral form of treatment, so just pills, and you can take those back to your village immediately after being diagnosed, and then that's a safe and easy treatment. It's a great feeling working with communities who welcome teams like us coming to help with sleeping sickness because it's not their fault that sleeping sickness is there, it's geographical, it's political, it's a whole host of reasons that they can't control. My hope is to eliminate sleeping sickness because it's possible.